This is where the fun begins. That's just a rumor that has kind of crawled up through fandom for years and years and years. Uh, I know that I know that uh, Tim met uh, George Lucas. They had a sit down conversation before the first book was done. I know mm -hmm. that that as with any of the novels, everything is cleared through uh, Lucasfilm. Right. And 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 a hundred percent for anything as major as a love interest being developed for Luke. Mm -hmm. um, that's a decision that George would have given a yes or no on. Are you sure? So be it. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Alora Baga and thank you for attending Cantina Nights. Um, an unusual little um, live, not a li unusual live stream, but a unusual time frame of coming live and joining you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. And it looks like my internet's kind of sketchy. So hopefully I'm okay and I'm not robotic for you guys. I don't know. So I have a little thingy up here. Connection is unstable. If you are um, using Wi-Fi, try to plug it in. So how are you guys doing? And welcome to Cantina Nights. I do have a lot of interesting topics to talk with you. This isn't the normal calf chat. This is where we're going to go over the state of Star Wars and um, talk about some latest thing that's going on in the realm of Star Wars or Disney Star Wars, you know, so that portion, that not the true authentic Star Wars, but we are also going to cover the anti-EU rhetoric that's been going on. And I've been noticing that there's a pattern to that. Um, every time a new show comes up, especially when it starts breaking lore, um, contradicting not only its own lore, but also what George set up in the movies, you start seeing this anti-EU rhetoric going on. So it's kind of like they're trying to tear down what came before to make what's going on look, sound, appear better. And then, of course, we have um, a special um, interesting statement that Billy D. Williams has shared. And I will share the video. We'll go over the conversation or um, over not basically the conversation that Variety had reported. But we'll go over that a little bit. But then go over the chat on Twitter that um, people have left towards Billy D. Williams and all of that. But first of all, before I get into the breaking news, let's go ahead and see who's in the chat. Let's see what's going on in the chat. We see audio is fine, but the video is, let me go ahead and then turn off the video. Then if it's just that, I don't mind being off camera, even though I set myself up and got myself all ready for you guys, because it's cantina night. So thank you guys for hopping in. I, I I really appreciate every single one of you guys. It's 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time where I'm at. So it's probably a little later where you're at. So hopefully you did grab some, you know, spirits, whatever, you know, you want and sit down and let's chat. So first of all, channel member Melissa Lord, what's up? How are you doing, lady? I'm so glad that you are here. And then Gordon, another channel member. Thank you so much. Howdy, Alora and chat. Had to stop by and wet my whistle. Hope all is well. Yes, all is well. Like I, 
you know, I wanted to do this cantina chat last week. And now my internet's okay. But last week, my internet went completely down. We had to take care of some hardware. We're back up and going now. So that's why Cap Chat was canceled. I had a huge, nice bit of show going on, which we will do this Thursday, talking about um, Asherad Het and beginning his lore. He he kind of influences through most of the timeline from the prequel era all the way through to Legacy. So we'll, you know, start diving into his lore and how he's so influential influential and all that but that's for cap chat today let's talk about the current state of star wars news and all of that all right and then we have there here we go <laughs> and then we have Corey cochran hello how are you doing all around arbiter how are you doing and we do have a darth toby and i'm going to spray him because i don't need him up here. He's like, nope, I'm not going to fall for it. There we go. Live action. So I'll probably pay for it later. All right. <laughs> Darth Toby live matters. <laughs> um, spraying basically like the water bottle is, you know, an easy way to deter them from jumping all over. So there we go. And then let's see here. Whoops. How come that show? Oh, there we go. And then much love and much respect to you, Alora. Thank you so much. I'm glad you are here with us. Come on, work with me, computer. Did I not? Did I just freeze up? My cursor froze up. Oh, there we go. I got it. Huh, what a day on this. Just what a day. I'm trying to do a live with you guys and everything wants to be weird. All right. So Zacharot is here. How are you doing? And let's see what else. And then Sith Assassin Trela is here. Another channel member. Hello, everyone. And hello. And so I'm going around just saying hi, just like a normal cap chat. This is Cantina. So just like cap chat, I like to engage with you guys first before we get into stuff. So here we go. And Soul Assassin is here asking us to please hit the like button. My cursor is being sticky today. So here you go. And to check out my merch store, he has it in the chat. And let's see here. And Jim the Despot is here. I have arrived. Yes, now we can begin this ish, right? We can begin. Let's get this party started. All right, let's see here. My my cursor's pissing me off. Okay. And then E. Claire Thompson is here. How are you doing? Another channel member. And let's see who else is hopping in. Gordon, what's up? Saying hello to, and then Red Hoodwinked is here. And let's see, and I think I got everybody. Um, if people are popping on and I missed you, then I'm sorry. Let's see here. So first of all, before we get into the topics here, let's go ahead, the the the, per, the topics that I mentioned, there is kind of like a good, you could say, breaking story here. You might have seen it on the internet already, like any social media, but it is about George Lucas. Now, George Lucas has been making, and Toby's back. Darth Toby's back. Mr. Darth Toby's going to get sprayed. Get down from here. There you go. So here we go. So this is what the breaking news is about George Lucas here. Is it, whoops, cancel. Is it what you expect? Not everybody's been talking about how he has betrayed everybody because he's a shareholder. And he certain vote and he made a certain vote um, public and what have you. So that to me, I can care less about. Let me go ahead and zoom this in. But George Lucas received an honorary Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. So he's getting the top, the, the Palme d'Or is the toppest award you can get from the Cannes Festival. Um, so I just thought I'd share this with you guys before we get into other news. This popped up into my timeline before I got started. So George Lucas, the iconic filmmaker behind the Star Wars and Indiana Jones franchises, will receive an honorary Palme d'Or on May 25th during the closing ceremony of the 77th Cannes, Cannes Festival. 77th. Wow, that's that's George's number. 77, right? Well, you know, his the movie came out in 77. But if you did not know... The first Star Wars media that came out was in 1976, and that was a novelization. And then following it is the Marvel comic before the actual film came out. So a little bit of history here. Um, the, the Festival de Cannes 
um, has always held a special place in my heart, Lucas said in a statement. I was surprised and elated when my first film, THX 1138, was selected to be shown in a new program for the first time directors called the Director's Fortnight. Since then, I have returned to the festival on many occasions in a variety of capacities as a writer, director, and producer. I am truly honored by the special recognition, which means a great deal to me. So congratulations to him. He has, you know, um, brought us, you know, some wonderful, amazing content through his own imagination birthed star wars and with the help of um steven spielberg you know indiana jones so he's responsible for for becoming independent and growing his own business outside of hollywood and then thus influencing hollywood through that though he's had a lot of backlash and pushback from hollywood in general for his own direction and stuff and um and i would say some of it's out of spite and jealousy I, I honestly could say that. Um, I honestly do see that. So she, when you start researching more into what George has contributed on his own and how that has influenced Hollywood, not inside of Hollywood, as an independent filmmaker, he did create his own corporate business, Lucasfilm, which is now sadly in the hands of an actual Hollywood corporate enterprise. So from Mr. Lord George Lucas is like, I don't want to be an influenced by Hollywood and the corporates, the corporation within, he built his own, he built his own empire and now he sold it to them. But that's for another topic. Um, in announcing the honorary Palm d'Or award, can can praise Lucas for building a Hollywood empire through the nine episodes of the saga. Sorry, but three of them are not his. So he did, they, they probably saying this to probably say that it influenced theirs because they bought the company from him but he did not contribute to the last three four of which he directed himself and for his unflagging passion for technology which has made him one of the pioneers of the visual effects industry so i just wanted to share this breaking news with you guys to kind of celebrate the man the maker and um and let you guys know that you know he's being awarded which he should have you know he's received so much recognition for his contrib contrib contributions throughout his time. So I think this is greatly, um, you know, well received greatly. Um, he earned all of it. He earned all of it. But then last three, the Disney trilogy is not his. And I wouldn't even put it, I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't have even put it as his. The nine, there was only six. Then there was the EU, which is this company and stuff. Let me see here. Let me see what you guys are saying. Um, Lucasfilm is now in the hands of the spiteful people. Yes. And then, hello, Tuscan Bob. What's up? Hollywood has um, always hated George Lucas' career and Lifetime Achievement Awards are given for, um, for publicity of the award, not the artist. Yeah, you have a point there, too. And I was kind of like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I bet you Tuscan Bob is going to chime in on this. And sure enough. You did. And yeah, I get what you're saying as well. It's it's um, it's a publicity award. Now, here comes my thoughts on this, even though I'm like happy for him and well deserved, I guess you could say. But do you think this is another way to steer away from um, maybe the black, the bad publicity he got for him, you know, saying what he's going to support for the shareholders vote? You guys can decide that. My mind always goes that way. I always think of all scenarios, all scenarios. Um, let me see here. And Gordon says, I would have, I would have liked to have seen more of Lucas's wills, not the Filoni, not what Filoni did. Oh, I've left a window open. Do you hear that? It's hot in my studio and I don't have AC and I was airing it out and I left the window open. So there goes a car zooming by. And then yes. Um, Hollywood always been jealous of Lucas' success. And we have Star Wars Marvel Pierce in here, another channel member. Thank you for tuning in and participating. Let's see here. And um, what you say is likely, and I meant to go click on this. I know I'm not the only one who doesn't count um, saying Disney does, um, does as canon. 
So let's see here. Hollywood didn't want nutty putts. <laughs> yes, I like that. They probably cheered George's endorsement for Iger. Probably. I can see that because we all know what Hollywood is about, right? We all, we all know. We all know. It's, it's, it's more than written on the door. It's seen. It's felt. It's heard. The closer you are to the source, the more you see, right? And I live like three hours away. <laughs> so I, I see a lot. I see a lot what that happens. And let's see here. And he says, by the way, that does not mean Nutty Putts would have been good or even marginally better. Exactly. And people don't think about it. They think, oh, well, he seems right winger. He sees, con seems conservative. He seems like he doesn't agree with all of this. Um but what if he just leave? What if he was brought in and he left everything as is? What if he doesn't change anything? You know, because people are hoping that this would change the direction. And a lot of people are concentrating more on Lucasfilm than any other like franchises Disney owns. Maybe a little bit of, you know, MC. And um, oh, my God, Dr. Toby, you need to go. And um. <laughs> and um but they see it like everybody it's like it's so pull it's so like focused on lucasfilm that they think if like that little shift in the shareholder board of the board is going to change like they're going to do away with the dt <clears throat> they're going to do away, away with all the lore that was established already under disney and that they're going to possibly just make, bring the EU back or correct, course correct how Luke Skywalker is written, Yoda is written, all of them. No, more than likely, they'll probably keep it the same. It's it's not going to change. It won't change. Dan is here. Welcome, welcome in his black face, Dan Black Royd here. I'm shocked they could have shuffled George out of <laughs> and out and away from Matlock and his TV dinner to even accept an award. They might surprise him in um in stage or on stage with John Williams musical performance. <laughs> That's right, because no one knew that was gonna happen. That was a surprise to probably him, prize surprise to Kennedy, um Kennedy, um, you know, Kathleen Kennedy. You know, not like that they would have known that that was already planned, right? Because, you know, people high up there are going to know what's being planned unless it's absolutely has to be a surprise. I don't know. We're not going to go there to those bits of like BS that happened at Indiana Jones, Jones, you know, but, you know, maybe the catering, maybe the catering did it right. Maybe the catering. Let's see here. Keynes is like being in um, inducted into a rock and roll hall of fame. And Bato is here. Hey, hello, guys. Time, long time no see. Well, welcome. I hope you're doing well. I hope you are doing well. Seems is the operative, operative, word, <laughs> operative word. Yeah. Let's see here. And Quentin. I meant, I meant I can't be the only one that doesn't count anything Disney does as canon. I, I understood. Yeah, I understood. But thank you for the clarification. Tuscan Bob says, I want to see George and Joe Biden to sit down for an interview, but have them um, have them told separately that the other is the one being interviewed. <laughs> I know what this is up to. Oh, my God. Talking about old men. OK. Shalom and good to see you all. Hello. Shalom to you. I'm um, howdy. I'm glad you guys are saying hello. Let's see here. And here we go. But how will Kennedy react? We need at least 27 videos. Yeah, 27 videos and um, on different shots of her face as if she's surprised and she didn't know. And I don't know. That's I don't know. That's fucking crazy. So, Mr. Dystopian, what's up? Keeping Iger in power is for the best. He's essential um, for Disney's self-destruction. That's an interesting one. That is very interesting because I think that, honestly, I don't think anything's going to happen. I think after all this, it's going to be hunky-dory. I, I honestly do. Um there, Disney is a multi-monopoly, uh, basically not multi-million, but mo a monopoly. Um, you know, it's not just based upon if Lucasfilm is successful or not, you know. And I think people are too focused on Lucasfilm, mainly, um, thinking that 
that's going to be the end all be all be all end all kind of thing for them. And it's not, it's not whatsoever, but we're not going to get into that kind of talk. We have other things to get into, but I thought I'd share this with you. You know, he's been awarded um, for his um, success under Lucasfilm, although, you know, he's no longer there anymore. And the last three are not his. So, you know, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Let's see what you guys are saying here. Um, T. Hilliam says, fancy using the 7th, 7th when Star Wars first uh, movie was came out. That's I pointed out before you walked in, sir. Yeah, so I noticed that. I'm always the one that notices numbers and stuff, too. So I, I seen that. I got gotcha. you. I, I, I feel you on that. And let's see here. All Around Arbiter says, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a joke. I know. I know what you meant. Um, 100. Quick at OG stars, look outside. The sky is fucking is fucking again. <laughs> I can't believe that. I mean, I <laughs> I'm gonna have to tell you more about that lore. But yeah, <laughs> but you're never gonna let me live that down. I know. Um, I have people like you in my life like that, so it's okay. I mean, if I do something silly and or someone else does, and they're right on us, never letting us forget, making us laugh. So I know how to take a joke. Um, fine additions. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Let's see here. When is the next Tyson Tuscan Bob live stream? I think he said he might go live this weekend. Who knows? But stay tuned. Stay tuned. Congratulations to the chat for surviving the ap apocalypse yesterday. <laughs> oh, God. How many of you guys really fell for that? Like, oh, God. I mean, we're in modern fucking times, you guys. Seriously. How many eclipses have we gone through that the world has not ended yet? <laughs> Come on now. They're just fucking. <laughs> That's for you, Tuscan Bob. They're just fucking. All right. Gordon says, never stop an enemy when they're in the middle of, of destroying themselves. Sun Tzu, the art of war. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. And Dan says, it is what it is. It is. <laughs> it is what it is. Let's see here. Nothing personal, just business. Business. All business for you. I know. I know. I, I love laughing. I love it when people make me laugh. Let's see here. Just got here. What did William say that was controversial? We haven't even got into that. That's coming up here pretty quick. So stay tuned. Grab your drinks because this is going to be very interesting. And I have a lot to say about that because I get what he's saying. But then I get the importance of why it was kind of frowned upon too. But we'll get into more of it here pretty soon. I don't know what you did, but it's not you, huh? <laughs> let's see here i think star wars is being focused yeah focused on is because of its global impact of why people have enjoyed what george lucas bought brought to the world yeah and that's the thing because that's the reason why we all talk about it we all discuss discuss it today why there's a majority of us that don't like the direction it's been taken in fact george doesn't even like the direction but <laughs> He don't care. Like he didn't like it. He said his piece. He's still making money. He doesn't care. He's getting the awards. He's fine and dandy. It's like it's it's over and done for him. It's like he said, it's a divorce. He's finally separated from it and it's down. It's done. Um, so he's done basically. And I have accepted that. And I hope a lot of people do too. And I hope a lot of people change, you know, like who are saying, Oh, George betrayed us. George doesn't give a shit. If he did give a shit and all of a sudden you've seen this, then it's, uh, that's a betrayal. He's done. He's done. He's rightfully done. You know, um, he turned it over to white slavers. He then apologized for that. Then he goes on to the interview and says what he says about it not being what he wanted. Like he lost control. Um, all of that. So he's he's separated himself. Now, he's just making money. That's all. He doesn't have to worry about anything else. And um, And has he betrayed us? No, because he's had that. He's been a shareholder. He's had that stock from the beginning of the sale of, of the company being sold. So there we go. 
Uh, no one knows the date or time. I don't know what that one is about. Maybe I missed it. Um, Jim, the despot, says there is was an eclipse. <laughs> there was an eclipse. It was so cloudy I couldn't tell. North Idaho, it's beautiful. Yeah, you're further away from the totality or the impact, I guess you could say, zone. That where I'm at, just below you. It was just very, it was just like hazy or whatever. That's it. That's it. But it's all good. Billy reviewed ISOM and said it sucked. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Breaking news from the black man himself. From the cult. All right. Mr. Dystopian says it's going to be apocalypto. I should have watched that movie. Um, I'm not even playing at or paying attention to the eclipse. I don't want to go blind like the people in the book of Day of the Triffids. <laughs> it's all done. It was um, you know, it's we're done. It was yesterday. It happened. We're done. No one died. If we did, then we're in another realm. Then hello, we're in another realm. <laughs> now I'm just playing with you guys. Star Wars Marvel Pierce says, yesterday reminded me of the movie Apocalypto when all of the peaceful Mayans celebrated the solar eclipse. There you go. All the peaceful Mayans. The Mayans. And let's get into like, you know, how people try to put all of us natives under the same thing of like doing, um, doing their sacrifices to the sun god during the eclipse or whatever. <laughs> Not all tribes did that. You know, so and who are to say that that's good or bad? You know, everybody has their own beliefs. Some people think, you know, organized religion is bad. You know, some people really love it and follow it. What are we to say? That's all up to you. And I'm not going to get into those politics. So Tilium says, Tilium says, David Fradloni, Star Wars isn't George Lucas Star Wars. It is not. You, you got that. You hit that right on the head right there. Black Hole Sun. Let's see here. Yeah, he sold out to Disney over a decade ago, but voting against Nutty Putts is a betrayal. Boom. There you go. There you go. And that's the thing. But these people, um, and how many times have these people heard now saying, George betrayed us, is now, you know, we're like, Disney or Star Wars being saved. Every time Filoni did something, our Star Wars being saved. But then when George said that, you know, um, that it's no longer his, that he lost control. They praised him during that. It's like they're just going with a narrative that suits them. You know, I knew in my heart, I was in denial, but I knew in my heart when it was sold that Star Wars was doomed. And then once the EU was canned, tossed aside, I'm like, okay, this is shit. We know what's going down. They don't care. They don't care what came before when they're when they're basically that's basically called revisionist history in a sense. If you want to go down that way, because they're a, a franchise that was being made that's under single continuity because it's not like DC or MC or any of them where they keep rebooting because they're a comic company. This is something that George and the people he bought in brought in the creatives, whether it, it doesn't matter which media it is, created one timeline of continuity in the single canon. So once they start tossing that aside, that shows that they don't care. They don't care about the canon. And we have seen this time and time again. In fact, we're going to go through this here in the show. And I'm just rambling now. So Quentin says, I've been upset with Lucas since that horrible ret retcon he and Floney did back in the... Th and that's another thing. That is another thing right here. People, it was already happening in 2008. Um, and then we had the continuity keepers going in and um, trying to fix everything, steer everything back into, you know, and correct everything and seeing little bits and pieces. Either they were honoring certain things like Maul's origin in the Plagueis novel. Or they were trying to retcon to make it make sense, but also kind of make it look like the Mortis Arc was just some type of myth fairy tale um, through the the fate of the Jedi. So we've seen, and then the Fett story as Mandalorians was being corrected as well. So we started seeing all that happen, and then everything was sold. Everything was sold. So there's that. So when you look at it and you see evidence of correcting something that someone allowed someone with free reigns. George with Filoni. And yes, that's true. George said, here, Filoni, here's your show. I'm stepping away. Have fun with it. And yes, George went in 
maybe once or twice a week, maybe even less than that, got to see some production, got to hear about development. And then from there, you know, did his thing, did his thing, kind of like what he handled with the EU in a sense. So he wasn't as involved, but he was involved, but not as involved as people think. But that's a whole different topic. <laughs> We're not, I'm not trying to steer away from that. But yes, thank you so much. All right. We'll get into that a little bit more when we talk about anti-EU isms. So Gordon says, yeah, the real betrayal happened when he sold to Pisney in the first place. Correct. And the more people realize this and come to terms with that, this is nothing when he talked about who he's backing for the board. That's nothing. It's nothing. And um, so that so people need to realize that like the betrayal happened upon sale. And did you guys know that like like at the end of 2010 is when um George went to Disney World. I forgot what was going on there. I think he was talking about certain rides that Star Wars rides and stuff like that. And um that's when Bob Iger started approaching him about selling Star Wars or Lucasfilm. Not just Star Wars, but Lucasfilm. And George had mentioned that he can will might he might consider it because he's considering on retiring. And that was the but that was the key ding 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 the keywords for Iger. And so Iger was asked to keep pursuing George to sell. So he kept on pursuing, he kept on pursuing. Negotiations started happening in 2011. And then I think it was August in 2011 is when George started writing the treatments. That's when they were talking. That's when the negotiations were going on. That's when he was deciding to sell. And so he was writing these treatments for the sell, for, for as I guess you could say, part of the agreement for selling. And then he went ahead and got the big three in, Luke, or, um, Mark um carry and ford and that was part of the part of the deal and then so when he finally finally when they signed the papers and it was finally under disney's hand they had already the big three ready they had the treatments and all that and that's when they said oh well thank you so much for the treatments fuck you george <laughs> we're gonna do our own shit yeah and then like two years later they tossed the eu so that right there was evidence is evidence right there to them revealing themselves. But, you know, what do I know? What do I know? There was an eclipse. I didn't know. The media didn't say anything about it. <laughs> Let's see here. Soundgarden fan. Okay, I didn't see that guy. That one right there. Let me see here. It's like calling people Hispanics because you know Cubans and Cumbrians are so similar because they speak Spanish. Oh, God. There's that right, right there. Latino and Hispanics, all of that. <laughs> that's another thing too oh no robot roboty hello nuts putts bots come up with that too so i don't know who you are saying a bots nuts putts all right dan says george is still putting or putting all his time and energy into his rise of skywalker cut yeah, that's right. How long is it going to be now? Maybe like seven, eight, nine hours. Are you guys ready for that? Maybe you should do a watch party once it comes out. Yeah. What do you guys think? I think so. Dan can help me host since we're talking about that. You know, the George Lucas cut of Rise of Skywalker. It's all down. Let's let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing shit right there. Amazing. All right. Tuscan Bob says, I came from an um, era before time existed. So it's really cool watching the world act like um, repeatable events have just occurred for the first time ever. And let's see here. Black Sun is also a type of underworld in the Star Wars universe. See in Shadows of the Empire. Yep. Let's see here. And it's um, communism rewriting history. There you go. Like I said, so people are like, you know, this like that's a buzzword today. But when you look at it, that's them rewriting the history of Star Wars that was already established by the maker, approved everything. Um, and it's it's a revisionist. If it's like something like a franchise like MCU or whatever, people expect reboots. This was not expected. This was like a betrayal. And in fact, like I think at a um, 
convention. It was Zahn and Ellen Austin or Aaron Austin. Sorry. Um, we're talking about a reboot. We'd be messy. And this was like 2012. I think this is before they even made any announcement. These guys probably had no idea about the negotiations or maybe they did. It, th nothing was said, but they're saying a reboot would have been nasty that it dishonors the writers. Zahn even said that like Zahn was right there. It dishonors the writers and the efforts they put in to build the world. Basically. Now imagine now he's like, Oh no, I'm cool. I got my paycheck. I brought in these other, like I retconned, you know, Thrawn and his origins and all this other stuff. I'm cool. I got my money. He's fine with it now. He's hunky dory with it. Let's see here. Quentin La uh, Lassiter says Disney Shield. Filoni, Filoni gave Ahsoka white lightsabers. Star Wars is saved. Oh, and then, you know, today, just on Twitter, <laughs> the white sabers were basically gray sabers. And she's a gray Jedi, you know, because sabers like indicate who you are. In Star Wars, you know, it's like a mood ring. It's like a fucking mood ring, you guys. So if you go gray, it's silver or white or whatever. If you're uh, a Jedi, then, you know, depends on what mood you're feeling. You can go green or, you know, green or um, blue or maybe even yellow now because that's a thing. And we'll get into that here pretty soon. Or if you're dark side or Sith, it's red. So mood rings, mood rings. I'm getting it in that Prince Zizor, yes. And yes, smash that like button and try to guess who is the master and apprentice, OG or Darth Stone or Toby. Right. <laughs> All right. I just found out that um, the true meaning of that song, Black Hole Sun, earlier this year, and it makes sense. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me see here. Um, George checked out of Star Wars in 2008. Yeah, you could say that like towards like he he was involved with the first two or three seasons. I admit there was more involvement, but that was to get the show launched and off. You know, and um after that he's like, "Bye, I'm going to do my own things." And he went and paid attention back to his Red Tail Hawks to finish that and other things. And then he started like working on like um Underworld and stuff and other possibilities. You know, and, and but and we can say now that maybe George is just checking out of everything. He's like checking out of everything. God knows, you know, forbid, you know, when he does pass and what happens to Star Wars. But, you know, the damage is already done. The damage is already done. Tuscan Bob says TCW was Lucas's first large scale sellout. It was him throwing away his legacy to try and make a Star Wars TV show work. Interesting. Yeah, I, I I see that. I see that. Let's see here. Resistance show 100% for Loney. Oh, God, that's 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 like a big, huge failure. It's so big that people are like, oh, well, Filoni didn't really work on that, you know, but when he works on the sidelines for a show that's successful. Oh, it's all Filoni. He is amazing. He's saving Star Wars. So notice that. Notice that. And while we're still here, we'll just talk to that about the anti eusms that, especially if you're on social media, especially Twitter, twi Twitter, Twitter's the cesspool, right? So anytime you notice a show is breaking its own lore, and this is Disney Star Wars show, and even like the movie lore that George, that they're following, you have these people, these Disney shills, these Disney fans or whatever you want to call them coming in and doing a lot lot of what I call anti-EU-isms. They go back to the star log quote. They start pulling up. Oh, George didn't like it. He said he was a, it was a parallel universe or I only let them play in the, the, the sandbox and I really didn't care. I didn't get involved or I didn't want to read that, whatever that is and coming in and attacking and attacking and attacking like that. And I go and look and I'm like, okay, so we have that um, show that has Barris Offie. What is it called? Tales of the Empire, for example. And who's in it? Like I said, Barris Offie, right? So they keep continuing to bastardize her character. She's like not even recognizable. And so be it. It's Disney Star Wars. You know, she she's better in the true lore, right? But she was also bastardized in TCW. So that's where it began. Going back to the Clone Wars. And um, but when you start pointing out continuity errors, whether if you're privy to their own lore or even to the movies, that's when you start seeing that. So notice those patterns, you guys. 
Notice that. I know some of us, some of you guys will just tune out and say, fuck them. And I don't blame you. I don't blame you whatsoever for like, they're, they're, they're full of shit. I don't want to waste my time. I knew what happened. I seen it all developed. It's all one canon until Disney got their crummy little mouse hands all over it. You know, and then there's me <laughs> because I am a fireball and I'm like, fuck you. I will tell you what I want to tell you and you guys can eat shit while I do it <laughs> because that's just how I am. So, yeah. So you guys see me. I've been kind of holding back on a few people on there. So there hasn't been much of as of lately. Um, but that's what's going on is those anti-EU-isms. And they're like, oh, well, George, because George says it's a parallel universe, it means it's not canon. Or George didn't read it, so it means it's not canon. I don't think he goes back and watches his own fucking movies. So if he doesn't go back and watch his movies, does it mean it's not canon? Think about that. <laughs> think about that. You know, because I use that against people who enjoy the EU, like enjoy pre-Disney stuff. You know, like, oh, George never read it, so it was never canon. Well. Does he even watch his own movies? Does he read his own scripts to his movies? No, he probably doesn't. So I guess it doesn't mean it. I guess it's not canon. You know, if you want to go down that kind of um, nonsense, there you go. There you go. So all around Arbiter says, I will continue to love the OT and the PT and the EU. Yes. Enjoy. Enjoy everything pre-Disney. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And we could discuss all the bad shit in it because there are some bad shit in it star wars marvel pierce says some schmuck is in comments section yesterday told me filoni has nothing to do with the bad batch what that's his baby that's what that's what birth like he birthed from tcw what do you find what is what's that fucking nonsense oh my god gordon mcdonald says lucas got rid of Tar tartovsky because he wanted to make a movie and he wouldn't let him the Filoni's um, first act was make movie, which the, um, what the hack, George, or heck, I said hack. Yeah, so there's there's that thing where he was negotiating with Tartavosky, and Tartavosky's like, um, can I be head of the department and can I produce different shows as well under Lucasfilm, under your license, and you know, and then you know, supervise the show you want. So that was a no negotiations. George didn't want it. And so we ended up with Furloni. We ended up with Furloni. Yes, Maul is a I am Eridonian, but grew up on Dathomir, which is in some ways would show which of Dathomir as involved and in, in types of slavery and slave trade, which lines up with their actions equal to the Sith. Maul shouldn't have even survived past the Phantom Menace. And that is coming up. The anniversary of The Phantom Menace is coming up. And I would like to do something special with you guys for that as well. I know Tim is planning something on um, USA. So um, but I would like to do something with you guys as well. So we'll see. Tuscan Bob says, his treatments would have sucked. Let's be honest. I think so. I really do. I really do. I think, you know, um, his, his better ideas were the beginning, the OT. And then he had some missteps in the PT, but they were pretty good. And I, I don't think that he's ever meant, and he's even admitted it, that he's never meant to tell the ending or the, you know, Luke Skywalker story, basically post Return of the Jedi. And even in 2018, he's even said that I there was really no sequel trilogy for me, just the wills. And that's what he wanted to do. So just imagine if he wrote the wills. How many of you guys would have wanted to see, you know, a show about how the Force interacts with the, the sentient being's body and all of that? I don't know. You know, would it be really scientific? Would it make you really kind of frown upon him going to the science realm out of the, the fantasy sci-fi realm into the science like the that? I mean, so there's so many different directions you're going to go on with that. But I don't the, from my view of how people talk about midichlorians, that wouldn't be well received. So I don't know, <laughs> man, we need to get to the other topics. I'm just going off here. Um, and it's already 44 minutes past since we started. Steezo, what's up? Yeah, just uh, Justin, um, just in Filoni has nothing to do with the bad batch. <laughs> Damn, I must have missed that one. That's hilarious. Sucked less, but suck. 
<laughs> Who wants to be? No, I'm not going to go. I'm not. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I could have played on words with that Tuscan ball. I'm not going to go there. You know me. Um, so assassin says Spanish is very different. Um, like the cultures under the Latin banner. Yeah, my dad, when he was young, my grandma and her husband was stationed in Spain. And the Spaniards, Spanish people in Spain will talk down on the Mexican use of the of Spanish and how they say it's lazy and stuff. So there is different ways in how they speak and how it turns into different slang and how it's adapted and adopted different places and stuff. Very interesting. So and then they have the formal Spanish in Spain, too, which isn't what you hear down here in the States and here in the States or even in Mexico. Quentin says, nah, Bob, they would have been damn good. <laughs> that could be a debate. <laughs> that could be a debate. Tehillim says, doom cock is making a Georgia kiss cut of Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> well, with JJ directing and... <laughs> that's hilarious i you guys are amazing all right so with this being said i know we're still talking i need to get out of this topic here and we did a little bit of talked a little bit about the anti-eu isms i know you guys witness it. i know you guys see me in action regarding it and stuff um we all know the truth and it's gone though it's all gone it's like it's it's no longer like star wars is no longer recognizable in its sense of modern star wars everything that is good about it is now in history in its own history there's no more there's not going to be any more of it not under george not under like even the writers that have came in and i think there's a newer novel out that has one of the classical writers from george lucas era that wrote and it's another story in the pt era and people are praising him i'm like i'm done with these these writers now even if they bring in others that wrote like um you know that wrote in the EU. I'm done. It's like they're not going to bring in the same content that I love. Now it's just the second. It's an. It's just. It's secondhand now. It's secondhand. You can't get it good the second time. No way you can. No way you can. All right. All around says I would like a fanboy boy sequel. <laughs> oh my god! You guys are going off in here. So so what is going on with Billy D. Williams. Now, I know maybe some of you guys have seen it. And then what's up with this fucking yellow lightsaber? Like, why does it seem like Disney Lucasfilm has a hard on for a yellow friggin' lightsaber? So before we get into the meat and potatoes with Billy D. Williams, <laughs> um, let's go ahead and talk about the yellow lightsaber. Why don't we? Let's go ahead and remove this. So there we go. So what's up with this yellow lightsaber? It's like they brought it in. That was like Ray Palpatine's color. She buried basically the bearing of the Skywalker lightsabers, I guess you can say, if you want to call them that. Is like saying, piss on them. We're, we're burying the past. They're dead. They're gone. You know, and so people should have taken that. You know in full value of what they're doing to the franchise, right? It's like Star Wars was never saved. You know, it's like it it died on purchase. It died once the mouse got his little creepy hands on it, right? So what's up with this yellow lightsaber? So let's take a look here. Let me go ahead and pull up an image. Did I save it on here? I don't think I did. Damn it. Okay, I'll bring up this article here and you'll see. I was going to bring up a picture of Anakin, young Anakin with Luke, both brandishing, holding on to the lightsaber. Let's see here. Um, where did it go? Marvel. Oh, there we go. I didn't recognize. All right, so here we go. This is from Star Wars, um, starwars.com. And um, thanks to... To Malvin for spotting this out because I hardly go on to StarWars.com anymore. I should just to pay attention to what's going on, but I don't. So I watched his video and I'm like, what the hell? I did a, I did a um, video on Luke with the yellow lightsaber like two years ago or so. 
And now Anakin's getting his own, you know, his own yellow lightsaber. What the hell is like a piss yellow lightsaber? And this is all for the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace. So it's the special edition number one first look. So um, they're basing it upon certain little quotes or um, scripture script that Anakin had said. I had a dream I was a Jedi. And so from there, they took this word of young, young Andy in The Phantom Menace and said, let's go ahead and give him a yellow lightsaber, possibly in his dreams, possibly in his dreams. So this is from Star Wars, The Phantom Menace 25th Anniversary Special Number 1. Written by Greg Pak, art by Will Sliney. And we'll critique that. You know me, the artist. I will critique. And the cover is by Phil Notto. And it's supposed to be celebrating the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace with an all-new story. Do you guys get what's going on here? An all-new story. They are changing how people perceive the original lore under the movie content there that George written, right? So this is exploring the early stages of Anakin Skywalker with never before seen revolutionary moments set before, after, and in between the scenes of the classic movie, meaning the Phantom Menace. Feature, featuring, um, featuring the dream of a Jedi, the gift of a Tuscan, the heart of a Gungan, and the ache of a mother and the horror of a hero. So there you go. The Phantom Menace is, you know, that's this, the 25th anniversary special number one. It comes out in May, May 1st. So there we go. So here's the number one. Here's the cover. And that cover is again by Phil Notto. So here's the cover. So mm, kind of like an, um, I don't know. I'm not too attracted to this. I think some of it's too dark, but let's move on. So here it is. So here is the lightsaber. Here's young Anakin. So you think this is the dream of the Jedi? And why would he want a yellow light? Why would he see have a yellow lightsaber? See, this is their way of giving him to vil um to. To honor Ray's yellow lightsaber, like give it some validity there. Give it some validity there. Right? Because they did that with Luke. He, between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, he found a guard's crystal and built his saber. I guess, from what I remember. I'm now going off. It's like I totally since blocked that out. And he started using the yellow lightsaber in between. Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Mind you, during that time frame in classical, original, the true canon Star Wars, it was all about him, you know, going off, learning more through the material that um, Obi-Wan left him, the journal. And then also learning how to construct his own lightsaber, his own lightsaber, not just build someone, another lightsaber with someone else's crystal, but his own lightsaber as, you know, the, the trial, I guess you can say, of becoming a Jedi. You know, and he had to make an artificial crystal for it. So that's all in there. So if, again, I'm referring back to Shadows of the Empire. But instead, the Disney Lord gave him a yellow one. You know, so we take it takes away the significance of his green lightsaber, you know, and, um, you know, he wasn't he wasn't afraid to still use a blaster whatsoever. You know, he he still used that. He still used the force. He built his lightsaber. He tested it out. And then he began to use it. That is like him, you know, his milestone, I guess you can say. But Disney totally took that away. Now here we have another yellow lightsaber and look at it. Look at it. It's like, it looks like it wants to explode. Like if you don't know how to construct a lightsaber, this is, this is lore. If you don't construct it right, tune it right, all of that, it can explode on you when you ignite it. That's always a fear of a, um, a Padawan when they're building the first lightsaber is doing everything correctly because it can explode or it can cause harm. And if you have, um, Various little bits of, 
I don't know, electric city there, or I don't know what's going on, sparks there, leaking of whatever there, then it's potentially going to harm you. It's going to explode or whatever. So you have this right here. And um, very sloppy looking. This lightsaber looks like he's holding a friggin' torch and it's going to like burn the back of his head off right there. But that's just me. And um, but a yellow lightsaber. And this is all for you guys now to think, oh, yeah, okay. So yellow lightsabers are cool because every single Skywalker carried one at one point. And so that's why Ray has one. <laughs> so imagine that. So I just wanted to go and touch basis on this, touch basis on this. And I know what you guys are saying. I know I haven't been paying, pay paying attention to the chat. Oh, my God. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Let's see here. Let me go here. <laughs> Let me see. I'm trying to get here. Yellow, li yellow lightsaber agenda. Compartmentalize. Yeah. Let's see here. They are big fans of shitty YouTubers. <laughs> probably. Probably because the yellow lightsaber is so cool. Woo! Yeah. You know, I can't, I can't fake, I can't do a fake expression of being excited. I can't do that. I can't do the ring of a shill kind of excitement. I can't. It's too fucking fake. All right. I think it's a water um, sports thing. <laughs> Let's see here. OG is doing her best um, signified. What's the deal with the yellow lightsabers? <laughs> I know, right? They seem to um, be retconning when the yellow lightsaber should be um, be relevant. And I know that's a thing too. Then people stick up, oh, it's for the it's for the sentience and what have you. But when you get into the lore, you like if you're a guardian or a um, a guardian or a sentient or, or not sentient a um, sentinel. Sorry, I sentinel. I meant or a consular. There's colors associated with it, but it wasn't the rule. It wasn't the rule because lightsabers are not mood rings. Well, they never used to be mood rings. But now they are. That's what it seems like. Okay. Follow the lightsaber road. <laughs> the yellow big road. Follow the yellow big road. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's all paved with good intentions, right? Because they're trying to lead you. They're trying to make you believe that... There's this path of these main characters that are significant to each trilogy once wielded a yellow lightsaber. So it makes, you know, Ray more valid, I guess. You could say. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see here. Prequel era, yellow, um, yellow Sanders were, were, were yellow Sanders were rare. <laughs> Let's see here. Anakin never had a yellow saber. No, but they're now, now he does. Now he does. So, you know, now you got to believe it because, you know, they say Disney Star Wars is canon, you know? <laughs> so um, they, they're building up to the introduction of the pride lightsaber. That's well, you never know. Ah, you never know. You know, like they, like Skittles share their, or like share the rainbow. Share the rainbow? Is that it? Skittles? Share the rainbow? I hate fucking Skittles. I have a story behind that. And to say I ate too many Skittles one summer when I was visiting my, visiting my family in, as a teenager in Colorado, and I fucking hate them now. Taste the rainbow. There we go. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. Let me see here. Um, I didn't read that one. Padawan um, Darsh Asant in the novel Shadowhunter had a yellow lightsaber as well as random Jedi in the novel I Jedi. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those. I'm not saying that there isn't yellow lightsabers. I'm just saying I'm pointing out what they're doing here. You get what they're doing? <laughs> did you, did you, um, Darsha Asant? Yeah, I recognize the name. Um, Tuscan says a dark side rainbow lightsaber designed to be inserted into young ladies. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> oh my God. Dan says you didn't, you don't mess with perfection. I know Dan, you should be very fucking pissed about this. This is like your show. They're like trying to make people look at the phantom menace in a different way now. How fucking dare them. And I say that, mm, no, it's revisionist history. Revisionist history. Gordon says, that's a bit too dark, Bob. So we have these piss yellow lightsabers. Piss yellow lightsabers. All right. Disney lunatic film, revisionist history, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. All right. Shit, Gordon. I missed that one in my video. <laughs> I'm about to go watch back. Go watch some of your videos. I need to go. I need to do that. 
Jim the Despot says, I remember seeing a meme of a Council of um, Nicaea style meeting of Star Wars fans to discuss how Hand of Thrones 45th fan made Sword of the Jedi series fitting into the EU timeline Tad Larkin 1 of 2. Oh, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. We'll get back to that. Wait, gift of a Tuscan. Tuscans are native Indian giver. <laughs> yes. Yes. Did you see that? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let me see. Where is it at? Oh, here we go. Yep. Gift of an Indian. Let's see here. A gift of a Tuscan. Gift of a Tuscan. The heart of a Gungan. The ache of a mother and the horror of a hero. The dream of a Jedi. There you go. They are honoring your your race, your species there, Tuscan. Tuscan Bob. Yeah, she did. They are making a way to come to come through. Kotor had a lot of Jedi Sentinels who use of the use the yellow lightsaber and later in the Eternal Empire. Yeah. So like I said, I'm not denying there wasn't any yellow lightsabers. Don't think I am. I'm just showing what's going on here in Disney Star Wars because their lore to sent sentinels are very different too. So and obviously, they don't keep to lore either. Red Hoot Wink said, like they were trying to change people's perspective of the PT characters with TCW. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were. And that's where you get like the Jedi are totally evil. And that's where you get it now in Disney Star Wars lore. Um, I'm not surprised. I know, right? It's like we had this little warning going on here, you know, and, you know, if. You know, we can always say, what if, like, if they didn't sell, would everything have been corrected? Would TCW seen as a proper propaganda reel, you know, created by the Empire? You know, who knows? But that's just fucking what ifs. And we're, it's too late for that now. Star Wars Marvel Pierce says, child Anakin dreams of yellow piss sabers, wakes up like a smelly redditor. Mom, someone spilled something in my bed. <laughs> Oh, damn. Uh, someone or, or someone did a prank on him and poured warm water and made him piss. Who knows? Okay. Jim the Despot says, show shows up. I can see him pulling a St. Nicholas and slapping someone in the face for suggesting the ad TCW and yelling hearsay. <laughs> yeah, that's that two of two. The sand people. The real Star Wars, Obi-Wan makes Anakin use a yellow lightsaber until he proves he can stop pissing in bed. <laughs> I need to do a Tuscan Bob emoji, or at least a Tuscan emoji. I need to do that. I think that's time. I haven't added any new emojis. I think we need some. I need to add them because, you know, they're supposed to represent my culture, my race, right? Like natives. So I need to add it. I need to stay true, you know, and, and add them because they're honoring me, you know? So maybe we'll next, maybe by Thursday, we'll have Tuscan Raiders as emojis. There we go. All right. Yellow sabers are for bedwetters. <laughs> they, they, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're not so heroic. They, they get scared and they piss their pants. That's, that's it. That's it. There we go. Tilliam says they are trying to use a yellow lightsaber to signal Ray Palpatine as Disney lunatic film chosen one. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Does anyone know if the Jedi ranks from the Knights of the Old Republic games, Guardian, Sentinel, and Consular? Yeah, I was just talking about that. And hello, Javier, how are you doing? Are still canon? Um, Kind of, sort of, but not really. I don't think they've fully established what is and isn't just yet. And I wouldn't really say they are still canon because it's still pre-Disney lore. Now, you mean Disney lore? Are they now in Disney lore? Um, kind of, sort of. Um, but not in, not fully as we know it in the true real canon pre-Disney. If they are, that would explain why Anakin uses a blue lightsaber. Let's see. I kind of wish Obi-Wan left Luke Qui-Gon Saber crystal. That would have made really neat and um, come full circle. I'm glad they didn't because they're not, you know, at the time they weren't about attachments really, you know, and um, I believe that I believe that Saber basically 
stayed within the council and the archives or whatever. I don't know. I have to go look that up. I've never really fully invested in looking to what happened with Qui-Gon's saber. Let's see here. Must validate Ray. Yep. I like a yellow lightsaber. Always been my favorite color saber. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Disney seems to be retconning the yellow lightsabers um, were common. Yeah. Now, what what color of saber do you guys like? Like for reals? Like I'm not joking. You know, I'm not joking. But if you want to uh, um, add some funny remarks, that's fine. I'm all down for the laughs. But what color lightsaber is your favorite? Let's see here. Javier says, Jedi Guardian excels in, at combat lightsaber dueling, hence why Anakin and Obi-Wan both relied on blue lightsabers to represent their combat prowess. Um, that's, that's I know, um, like I said, I know about the lore there. The thing is, it's like color didn't fully indicate either. So it wasn't like a coloring where the color has to stay true to what their um, profession abilities are. So let's see here. Sith Assassin Trella says, oh my God, let's go. I can't stand these people. Grizzy does a great job mocking them. I know. I can't, I can't, I can't even, I can't even act it out. I can't even act out a chill reaction like that. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry, you guys. All right. So let's get off of this topic here and let's get into, let me go ahead and close this here. Let's get into what Billy D. Williams. I'm going to close some windows that are not very relevant to the topic. Let's see here. George Lucas. Um, all right. So how many of you guys have seen the latest on what Billy D. Williams said? And if you're on Twitter, you might have witnessed Variety's tweet about it and probably seen the cesspool of scum commenting in it. Um, so we're going to get into that. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and first pull up the video. And that's not the video. That's not the video. There we go. I'm going to pull up the video here. We're going to listen to it. I'm going to pull up the tweet of the article. We're going to go into the article. We're going to discuss this. And we're also going to get into Robert Downey Jr. as well. Thought I would pull up something and also give my opinion about it too, basically, on what I think about it. Because I was, when it comes to blackface, or redface, or whatever, and now I just gave it away for those who are like, what are you talking about? It's about what Billy D. Williams said about blackface. Um, I've always been the kind of like, let's bring in authentic people if they have the skills, right? If, if they have the skills and they earn their place, right? So like for a native actor, if they needed them and they, and they're exactly, they have the skills and everything they need, then bring them in. So that's a bit of that. And I'll get more into it here. So let me go ahead and share. Let me go ahead and share. So, uh, let's see here. I think the sound, the sound is on. Everything's on. And Dan says, I have, I've, have been fighting the battle for 40 years. Yes, you have, sir. So Mr. Colt 45. Yes. So let's listen here on what is being said. Oops. Right here. Oops. Nope. I hate this. There we go. All right. Here's the thing. Let me go ahead and rewind that sucker. Did you guys hear that? If you guys heard that, then I don't have to worry about the sound. So <laughs> dead. Lado cursing in a talk show. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's get here. Um, whoops, I keep doing that. Oh fuck, and I just like I just left the I just got rid of the window. Good job, Alora. I pressed the wrong button. Let me bring it back. Wah wah wah. Wah wah wah. I went to click on it and I clicked the X and now it's gone. Now it's gone. So let's see here. I already have it already ready for me to go. Let me see here. Scroll up to get it. And wrong one. I can't believe I did that. Good job, Alora. Okay, here it goes. Here we go. Here we go. Let's take two. Let's take two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Okay. All right. Share again and we'll get into the video. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. I know it's Bill. It is. It's Bill. 
It's Bill. But we're going to all listen it to it to it together. We're going to do it together. All right. Let's see here. Let me see. That's not it. Okay. Here we go. All right. So let's get into this interview. Yeah, I it. loved it. I loved I it. I hope you guys well, can see, hear I it. I love that kind of stuff. Yes. I Big love- asses. Who doesn't? No, no. No, I know. Yeah. I, I agree. Okay. But, but here's the thing. Today, I mean, they would never let you do that. Why? Blackface? Why you, not? Because you should do it. That's maybe that's your point of view. You should, th- th- if you're th- an th- actor, you should do anything you want to do. I. That's a great point of view, but the theater would be bombed. Oh, I mean, Muni and I used to talk about this all the time. Muni was the one who was the first person that I worked with in those years who said to me. If whatever, as an actor, you should be able to do whatever you think you can do, you should be able to do it. But again, not to bring up your sore point, but you actually lived in a period where you couldn't do that, where you couldn't but play the part matter. you should have played. But it didn't matter. I, the point is. And that's a great attitude, but it still did happen. Of course it happened. Okay. I mean, but, but the fact is that you discuss it. Anybody right. can talk about it means that it wasn't happening but i mean but and the Paul point is, comes from an era you don't go through life feeling like i'm a victim correct i couldn't agree with that more i, I i'm just i mean i refuse to go through life no saying to the world i'm pissed off i'm not gonna be pissed off 24 I, hours a day and you shouldn't because of all that pussy you got that's what i've been trying to tell and there we go. We'll end it with that. We'll end it with that. He went there. But the thing is, is he's like, people should get their jobs based upon their merits, right? Not their skin, like their the skin of their color of their skin. And I get it. I get it because we do need quality actors and stuff. And I do get, in a sense, the point of like, well, that kind of looks distasteful if you're gonna color someone's skin who is white, black, or red, or whatever. However, if they can act it out, I can see. But then, you know, so I'm, it's like I'm not stuck on a fence. I get it. But the thing is, is he's like, don't go around being a victim. That's his whole message. Don't go around being a victim, being pissed off at everybody. And then Bill goes, well, yeah, because you get a lot of pussy. <laughs> so that was classic. That was freaking classic. But you see how he's trying to, like, question him because Billy D is in the wrong think. He's in the wrong think. He's in the wrong thing. And when you look at the Twitter comments to this, that Variety made an article, I should have closed that fucking window. But anyways, um, when you see the Variety, and I'm going to pull that up, when you see the the article to that Variety's article to this interview, in the comment section, holy shit, there is a lot of shit going on in that. Because he's not, he's a black man. He's not saying what they want him to say. And he's not adhering to, um, you know, what maybe the majority or not even the majority in his race is saying about, you know, what blackface is and why, why it shouldn't be and why and all of this, all of this. So let me see. Let me go ahead and scroll up and we'll get into the other part bits of this that I want to talk about. Um, Billy D. So acting, meaning you're playing someone you're not. Exactly. That's what acting. And that's where that fine line is, right? Because you're you're playing something and someone you're not. Sometimes you're a friggin' puppet, like a Muppet baby or a puppet like Yoda, you know? <laughs> and you're under there, you know, moving it and stuff like that, like in the OT. You know, sometimes you're an R2-D2. So are you now, like, um, you know, appropriating that droid culture you know see this is see where i'm getting at with this so there's that fine line um but like i said like if whoever qualifies the best i get it should get the role yeah so i have that i'm happy like for my culture for my people like i'm happy we have native actors and actresses that are stepping up to play those roles because before then there wasn't there wasn't and i'm happy for that as well so let's see here god bless billy d and then I agree, do blackface, whiteface, brownface, Asian face. Let's do it. Like do it, like not just one, do it all, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna go down that way, do it all. Williams 100. 
Shut up, Mar. Let him talk. Agree. He's like, wouldn't even let him get a thing in because, again, he was wrong speak. Wrong speak. Wrong speak. Um, don't question Billy D. Bill. <laughs> right? And let's see here. Um, laugh out loud. Wow. Okay. <laughs> right? That's like, if you read the article, you're not going to get the nuance unless you watch this video. Thank you, Soul Assassin, for sharing with this with me last night. I was like, holy shit. This is, this is going to go on the show tomorrow. This is going on the show tomorrow. I really can't stand Mar. Yeah, I get it. Let's see here. They, um, that was cool. Billy D is awesome. And then here we come with T Tuscan Bob. Mar is such a fucking cowardly douchebag. <laughs> makeup is makeup yep makeup is makeup that's like you know in in like cartoons and anime you remember that when everybody's like well maybe the black a black person should voice a black character you know remember that and then so we're like okay so well then who would voice a simpson character they're all yellow <laughs> you know so there's that um lando only about getting those panties Racist just in Ireland. <laughs> that ending was marvelous. I forgot that that ending was there. Jesus, it's, it's like beating a dead horse. <laughs> Let's see here. Soul Man is hilarious. And Tuscan Bob says, this isn't about actual blackface at all. This is a way to come out um, at the whole straight um, by playing gay characters issue from a different angle. Hmm. Now, there you go. So if he's okay with blackface, then should he be okay? Because he, he wasn't okay being considered a pan character at one point. But then again, so should this be thrown back at him about being a pan character? It should be okay then to have a different sexual orientation, craving something different than your opposite sex. You know, so there you go. So that's something to think about right there. And I'm with you on that. Let's see here. And he strayed off the plantation. Uh-oh. He's trying to make Billy D agree with him on, and he won't bite. Billy D. William is old and doesn't give a damn anymore about what people think. I don't think he ever gave a damn any time in his life. He seems like he's someone who just spoke his mind and he's like, I'm not a victim. I'm not this and that. You guys are, and there's a few of them that are like that. But does that mean Holly did, Wood is saved? No. Um, good point, Greg. And then I see I have a new member. So I'll go ahead and check it out here pretty quick. And 10 member gifts. Oh, I missed that. Holy crap. Holy smoke olies. I don't know where that came from. But thank you so much. Holy crap. I will get to that. I will get to that. I will get to that. Okay. Soul Man and Topic Thunder Hilarious. Yes, and we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So thank you, guys. Thank you for the um, 10 gifts, member gifts from Emilio gifted 10 OG Star Wars memberships. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's see here. And um, let me see here. Let me go to here. Julian Garner was the most um, glorified to play Silver Surfer. They couldn't happen to find one non metrosexual beta male in Hollywood. Or happened. Yeah, I see that. And thank you for becoming a channel member. Thank you so much. I appreciate it amazing and let's see here and then soul assassin trailer i think i missed out on something here it's highlighted let's see here okay all right and let's go back here logically he is okay with straight dudes playing gay characters so he is trying to be consistent by saying blackface is okay yeah yeah so let's see you know you it's like if if he's not okay with it then would he be a hypocrite? That's the thing. Making you guys think here. Making you think. Making you think. All right. Damn Emilio. Let's see here. So let's get into that article now. I want to show you guys a cesspool of what's going on here. Because, yes, he is not conforming to what they think he should as a black man. And that's the one thing we can point out here. That's the case there. Let's see here. Make sure. There we go. I think that's the right one. Let's look at here first. Let's look at this first before we get into that article here. 
So here we go. So this is back in 20, um, January 22nd, 2020, um, when Robert Downey Jr. defended his Oscar nomination blackface role in Tropic Thunder. So we, you know, kind of discussed that already. But again, here we go. So we have, he qualified and he knocked it out of the park, right? Everybody was just amazed. He, you know, was an Oscar nominated. He was, you know, nominated for an Oscar, all of that. But everybody loved his character. I think if it's done right and people are like, hey, that's pretty cool, blah, blah, blah. Then, you know, there's this, there's that. There's that. So let's go ahead and stop sharing this. Did I even share it up on screen with you guys? I don't know if I did. Let's see here. Laura speaks Gungan. <laughs> Misa. Uh. <laughs> Let me see. I hope I shared the right one. Things. Um. Let's see here. Come on, open up for me. There we go. There we go. Let's see here. Here it is. Here it is. So this is the article that was posted later earlier today or not too earlier today. It's like, no, it was yesterday at 5.59 p.m. So this was this happened because I Soul Assassin to share the video with me that evening. And we have this right here. Billy D. Williams believes actors should be able to perform in blackface. If you're an actor, you should do anything you want to do. <laughs> so now, is he going to eat his own words, you know, because of Lando and who Disney made him now, you know? So here we go. So we have Joshua here, right here. We don't listen to Jim Crow era actors. See where this is going? Because he's not conforming to what they think he as a black man should think and feel about things, right? And then, um, you know, of course, make blackface a great again. So we have everybody, we have different people on this with their different opinions, different opinions. Captain Obvious of the Millennium Falcon. And then someone calling him based. And then, um, then someone saying a bunch of white people are going to be offended on behalf of black people. The White Nighters, right? And then Thomas right here says, I'm sorry, but no, the history behind blackface is far too racist and evil to be allowed in today's society because, you know, a lot of generations now are too soft. They can't, they can't handle anything. Um, then um, let's see here. Let's scroll down. And then someone says, Billy D. Williams, your career heyday didn't make it past the seventies. You couldn't even make it to shaft or Superfly." So I guess he was trying to diss him. You know, you know, his his career made it past the 70s because he was obviously in Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> you know, and then uh, maybe he is right for when they put up that face. Maybe they can feel it to what's behind the blackness. Putting up masks can be very helpful. Hmm. What do you guys think about that? And he's not being serious. So there's there's different variety here. I want to see what you guys are saying about this. I want to hear. You know, it's I like to listen to your eyes or see your guys' opinions and what you think. White chicks is pretty funny too. That's right. That's right. That's one of the fun ones that I like to watch now and then just to have a good chuckle now and then. White chicks. Jump in, jo Josephat. Holy free holies. Holy Toledo Batman. <laughs> I think I got that right. Misa thinks blackface is okay, Annie. <laughs> I can't believe I went through that. <laughs> Now you guys are not going to let me go past that one either. Well, nice Emilio. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of you. Thank you for being such a sweetheart and gifting 10 people memberships. And those who are gifted, remember after a month, you need to renew. Smash that like button. Dan says, forget Iron Man. And he's now a... And he's now gifted to a channel member. Woo! Forget Iron Man. This was... The hero we needed. <laughs> Tropic Thunder was hilarious. Robert Downey Jr. was amazing. And let's see here. We're going to start closing out here, but I just want to get through a little bit more about this article. And I am so thankful to have been able to spend this evening with you in Cantina Chat. And Cap Chat is this Thursday, 9 a.m. And we have a whole new, another show of lore talk and stuff, talking about Ah Sherrod Hetz. And going some over some other things that I have planned. So Gordon says, use mind tricks to make the like button like itself. 
And then Sith Assassin says, I saw all of those. Yeah, I think I seen one of your tweets on that. And I think I replied to it, I believe. Um, Williams is only the in the biggest movie franchise ever. Correct. In such an amazing role, too. I mean, you know, he it's like there was so much suspense behind his character and what happened in those scenes in Empire Strikes Back. You know, you loved and you hate, then you loved him. You love to hate him during that time because you're like, did he fucking betray them? You know, what's going on? Why did he do this? You know, kind of deal. Um, Sith Assassin says, but if you ignore it or pretend it never happened, it'll happen again. And where is Danny DeVito? <laughs> Where's Danny DeVito? Let's see here. I always really liked our day, our DJ Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock Holmes. I like, I like the second one. I like the second one. That one was my favorite. The first one was okay. I like the second one. That's kind of odd, huh? Like, like in the second installment to a double or two duology. Ah, uh, Sherrod Het, Darth Cray, arguably the most badass character ever. Yes, we are going to talk about him. We're going to talk about the early years and his father. What happened? Why? Why is he being raised as a Tuscan Raider? Um, sent you an R2D2 comedian video OG. Okay, I'll go check that out. Let's go. Let's see what he's bringing up for us. Let's go ahead and stop sharing. Okay, let's see what's going on here. All right. Oh boy. And should I share it? Should I share it? Um, <laughs> okay. I think I should share it. Hold on. You might hear a little bit of background noise for it. Okay. Stop. Stop it. Okay. Yes. I think I'm going to share it. So let's see. Head had herpes. Ew. Gross. What the hell? I did not see that coming. Let's see here. He didn't make it to Shaft or Superfly was in Star Wars. That's trash. <laughs> yeah, share, share, share it, share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. Okay, let me go ahead and share it. <laughs> let me actually do it instead of chanting share it. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Smash that like button, everybody. Let's get into this. I want to go ahead and start this damn thing over. Okay. She said Chewbacca from Star Wars is Mexican because his name is Chewy. <laughs> and he's a mechanic. <laughs> and he rolls all his R's. <laughs> First of all, Chewbacca is too tall to be Mexican. If anybody Mexican in Star Wars is R2D2. His name sounds Spanish, Arturito. <laughs> Arturito. He even speaks Spanish, Arturito. <laughs> I saw his comment. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Holy crap. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Am I reading Outlander? I read that. Whoops, wrong one. I read that already. But yeah, I wanted to go over the lore of Asherod Hetz because he's such a big influencer throughout the whole timeline from then until Legacy. All right. So you guys, what do you think about Billy D. Williams and what he said? You know, um, now, does this now make him a hypocrite for not wanting to play a pan character? you know, someone of a, a different sexual orientation. So that like, again, like I said, like to throw out something for you guys to think about, but then also too, him receiving all this backlash from people and how they're dissing him and stuff like that is probably because he's not thinking the way he, they want him to think because he should conform. He should be the victim and he refuses. Yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in. This week, we'll get into our calf chat, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Whatever cringe factor will be, we'll determine the night before. I like to kind of stay up to date as much as I can with cringe factor and what's going on. Then Asherod Asher Het lore. So, and how he was raised as a Tuscan Raider. So, Tuscan Bob, you might like this guy. You might like the character. Maybe it's you, me. And, um... So, you know, starting with that there, and maybe we'll get into Asajj Ventress a little bit more, Bear's Offie. Who knows? We'll see what comes of that. 
I have another couple other things that we're supposed to be talking about. I don't recall right now. And then, of course, that night should be the um, casual rage. And then Friday is USA, the spacing, um, 8.05 Pacific Standard Time. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably be in the chat listening in and contributing my thoughts to the chat. I don't know when he's going to have a full panel on, but once he does and we're on, we'll sure in hell let you know. And thank you guys again. And I appreciate every single one of you hanging out with me, talking the state of Star Wars. Watch out for this anti-EU isms going on. It's always like clockwork just when something's going on with Disney Star Wars and they're breaking their own canon or their own lore. That's when you start seeing that. That's when, or if you even point it out as an EU fan, then they'll come back at you and start talking shit. So just notice that, that it's, and then also keep on, keep an eye out because they're always doing this revisionist history on how you think and how you should watch and how you should perceive George Lucas era of Star Wars, particularly the movies, you know, with the yellow lightsabers and Anakin and all this coming out to make you think differently about the Phantom Menace, you know? So, and then also we're coming up on the 25th anniversary of that in May. So stay tuned for more details. I shall talk to you guys soon. Let me see what you guys are saying before I fully close out here. Like, I really don't want to leave. Um, let me see here. I think Billy D. Williams is hella based and has more respect from, from me. Okay, there you go. I thought Mar was going to try force choke him <laughs> for a second. Right? He was all over his ass on that. He was all over him on that. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, OG did a lot of cert, um, research of the the Het story. Yes. And let's see here. Got to break out my Republic comics. Yes, you do that. And everybody, if you have the Republic comics, bring them out for calf chat. We are starting in the beginning. Starting in the beginning. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Since we're talking about Sith history and all this other stuff because of Acolyte, might as well just talk about uh, Sherrod Het and how he influenced a lot in the history of timeline in Star Wars. Uh, modern discourse is div divisive and overly simplistic. A nuance is lost in 143 characters and absent con or absent context of all that is left in the bias and anger you brought with you. I'm with Billy. There you go. May the force be with us all. Yes. May the force be with you guys. Let's see here. Laugh a lot. Research. <laughs> OG probably got something wrong. Laugh out loud research. <laughs> oh, I don't. That's funny. Just one more round. Just one more round. Everything's on me. Now, meet me for coffee. Let's go ahead and take care of these hangovers and meet me for coffee Thursday. So if you continue to enjoy your libations, enjoy yourself and meet me Thursday morning for Cap Chat. So thank you guys again. And may the force be with you. All of you. That's just a rumor that has kind of crawled up through fandom for years and years and years. Uh, I know that I know that uh, Tim met. Uh, George Lucas, they had a sit-down conversation before the first book was done. I know mm -hmm. that, that as with any of the novels, everything is cleared through uh, Lucasfilm. And, oh. and, and a hundred percent for anything as major as a love interest being developed for Luke, mm -hmm. um, that's a decision that George would have given a yes or no on. Another happy landing. <laughs>